main review of the Brooks Racer ST. Uh, and it, essentially this is number five on the Racer ST. This is the fifth version of it. Uh, this baby got put through the ringer, so essentially Scott's here with, with me to look at this because I rolled this, man, I rolled this last summer and into the fall and did the UROC 100K, at least as much as I did the 100K, about 40 miles of it in this shoe itself. And uh, really wear and tear on this is good. You look at the tread pattern, Scott did a whole season of Xterra off-road tries this summer in it. And uh, it, the, the wear on here looks great as far as looking to see if it, if it wore through uh, the outsole or anything like that. It looks good. Uh, what do you think? I mean, he's the same as, as me. It needs some posting uh, for him to stay healthy. He needs a little uh, stability in it for overpronation. What do you think of these? I mean, they were fine. I mean, races were fine. I had actually even done a couple long runs when mm -hmm. I couldn't find some of my other shoes. And right. They were fine. Um, I don't think I ever wore them with socks on either. And felt good? Yeah. Never. I mean, normal race type blisters, but. Right. Nothing, when you get grid serious. in there. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Essentially, guys, on this, what you're looking at, dual density right here. And it's in a shoe that comes with a little more underfoot for a racing flat. It's not going to be the lightest thing out there, but it does feel like a racing flat. It's not super soft and uh, flexible, so you get some good pop off of it. It is responsive. I felt, to me, for some reason, um, that it was... It rolled smooth enough, but it never felt to me to be the smoothest racing flat I've ever had. So, it, you know, if we temper it down a little bit and give you, you know, all honesty, which is what you want to get here on Running Village, you know... It, it felt fine, I think, on trails it's good because it's uneven terrain and you don't notice that. But when you do some road stuff on it, it just seemed a little flat. If the geometry was a little off for me or what, uh, granted, I've been doing a lot more stuff in shoes that are less than a 12 millimeter drop heel to toe. And so as you get used to that, when you come into this, uh, you know, it just felt a little uh, less smooth. Then I had remembered the other versions. As far as the posting and everything, I never, yeah. you know, felt fine with the support. It's like you I didn't feel beat up afterwards or no, anything like even that. Even on some longer stuff, I ran these on on railroad tracks one time and yeah. still had enough enough there. Yeah, and they classify it as a racing shoe, but this is basically in today's category a, a lightweight trainer with some posting for someone that over pronates. And I would think, man. I put a, a plenty of miles on him racing and training last year, and then he wore them all summer um, and into the fall. So it's a it's probably a 300 mile racing flat. I don't think you can get 400 miles out of a shoe like this. But if you're someone that's you go minimal and you wear shoes until you know until they fall apart and fall off your foot, you can get that many miles on them. But uh, for true wear and tear without beating you up, I would think it's a 300 mile shoe. Probably not beyond that, but it's a lightweight trainer. That's what you get. So. That's the Brooks uh, Racer ST5. I hope that helps you. Stay tuned.